all like to make plans about our lives. We like to organize ourselves and think through how things are going to happen. Sometimes the plans are about little things like where we're going to eat after worship. Sometimes the plans are about big things like changes, if you will, that, that come, what be coming up the birth of that grandbaby, that retirement, that change of employment. These kinds of changes we like to organize and manage and plan and make us think that we might have some control over our life. But sometimes those plans get turned upside down. And sometimes those plans just don't fall out, don't play out the way we think they should and they ought, the way that we plan them to be. How we respond to those changes that come our way can often shape how it is that we see the world, that we think about the place of God in our lives. I had major back surgery in the mid-1990s, a spinal fusion. I was in the final semesters of my Master's of Education degree at North Carolina State University. I missed nearly a semester of classwork. And I had friends who would record the lectures, bring the assignments, keep up with, with the work and help me along the way so that I wouldn't be delayed in that coursework. And finally, I got the permission from my doctors that I could drive again. That was exciting. And so I began to make plans about how I would get back into school how I would go back to the campus to do the work that needed to be done so that my degree could be finished on time. And so I began to put those plans together and I decided my first step was to go to the library and do the research that I'd been putting off. And so I planned that on this day I would get up, now that I could drive, I would drive across town and make my way into the library. The problem is, that it was pouring down rain when I woke up. And so I thought to myself, hmm, do I really want to do this? It's raining. It's not really safe for me to drive in the rain. I haven't really driven much since my surgery. It's a long way to get to the campus. Parking is going to be a bear. I'm going to have to walk a long ways. Maybe I don't want to do this. And then this other voice over here says, but yes, you have to. It's time. You told yourself you would, so get up and go. Oh, but I don't know. You know, you could put this off another day or two and it would be okay. But I really need to get back to work. You know, time's running out and I have deadlines to meet, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So I got myself dressed and ready to go, got out to the car, drove over to the campus, circled the little parking lot that's right at the front door, waiting for just the right space to open up. Finally, a car backs out, I scoot in, and then this sense of dread comes over me, this sense, this feeling that I wasn't in the right place. And so really, without thinking much, I put the car in reverse, I backed out of my space, and I went home. And I thought, now why did I just do that? I pulled into the driveway, frustrated with myself that I didn't actually get out of the car and go into the library. I make my way into the house, and the phone is ringing. This is before the days of cell phones. So the phone is ringing, and I rush to answer the phone, and it's my sister's babysitter. And she says, oh, thank you for answering the phone. Your niece has a fever of 104. I can't reach your sister or her husband, and I have called an ambulance to take her to the hospital. I really hope you can meet them there. I hung up, got back in the car, and drove to the hospital called my sister at a different number that I knew that others didn't know, and she was there promptly after that. Plans change. Sometimes they change because we make the changes. Sometimes they change because other people make the changes for us. Sometimes they change because the power of God is at work in our lives in ways that we cannot see or we cannot anticipate. 
but only as we look back upon those changes, maybe with a little hindsight, we say, oh, that's what that struggle was that morning. My will said, go to the library. God's thought was, stay home. You're going to be needed for something else. And often we ignore that gut feeling and we push through with our plans because we think we know best about our lives. You think about Joseph. Joseph and Mary. Mary comes to Joseph and says, guess what, honey? I'm with child. They're not married. Joseph goes through his thought process and says, well, wait a minute. This isn't a good thing. I could dismiss her. I could stone her. I could do any number of things. And so Joseph puts his mind to work and decides that he will dismiss Mary quietly in order to spare her any embarrassment. Until an angel shows up and says to Joseph, 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 things are changing in your life. And the one that you love, well, yes, she's expecting, but she's expecting the God, the Christ child. You are going to be her partner, her spouse. You're going to journey with her and raise this son. This is your task, Joseph. And so Joseph's plans to dismiss her, they get turned upside down. And he instead follows the call of God to stand by Mary and to raise that baby Jesus. You think about the apostle, the, the zealous one, Saul, who has plans in his mind that I've got to protect the law at all costs and this early church, well, they're destroying it. And so he sets about to persecute those early believers he arrests them. He punishes them. He harms them. Those were his plans, you see. But then he's met on the road. The Spirit comes over him. He's struck blind. The Lord speaks to him, changes his name, gives him a new identity, and sets him on another path, another way to proclaim and preach the gospel to take that story of God's love for humanity out to the farthest ends of the world, to all people in all times. Those disciples of Jesus, they had in their mind a set of plans. Here's the Messiah, Jesus. He's going to turn the world upside down. He's going to eliminate the Romans who are holding us. He's going to do what he needs to do and be the Messiah King. But then Jesus keeps saying to them, we're headed to Jerusalem, friends, where I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to suffer. I'm going to die for you. That's where we're going. And the, the disciples say, but no, wait, that can't happen to you. That's not the way it's supposed to be. And Jesus says, this is the way it is. This is the way it is. Because there are people who are putting plans in place to betray Jesus and to ensure that his voice is not heard that his witness is not seen. And so those plans get in motion. And we know that where those plans go, it leads Jesus to the cross. But then God does a new thing, brings forth a new set of plans that says, no, this is not how it's going to end. God raises Jesus from the dead defeating sin, death, the power of the devil, defeating our human desire to control life and to think that we might know better, that we might be God. But instead, God raises Jesus from the dead, triumphing over all of our own sense of humanity and righteousness because God has already seen 
that God's people could not be faithful. And so God is faithful to his people. And it's that faithfulness that makes the difference in our lives. Not our faithfulness, for we can't do it. Left to our own devices, we're going to follow our plans to the ends of the earth, whether that brings us good or bad. But with Jesus' presence in our life, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God's plans play out in our lives. We may not always see it. We may not always recognize it. It might take a little hindsight to look back upon it. But when we do, we begin to see God at work, not eliminating our suffering, but journeying with us through the suffering. Not making our path easy, but walking beside us, behind us, in front of us, walking with us. And as God does those changes of plans, as God continues to shower the abundance of that love upon us, God comes to us in water, in bread, and in wine. And God blesses us time and time and time again. Picking us up when we fail. Setting us on the right path when we stray. Gathering us into the bosom of God's love where we remain forever because it's God's way, not our own. Thanks be to God. Amen.